What's up, YouTube? Happy uh, New Year, I guess, by the time this goes up. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to everybody. I uh, hope you guys had a wonderful holiday season and we're ringing in 2019 with hopefully some big stuff happening here in the snake room at Morph Mixology. Super excited about that. Real quick, if I haven't said it before, it doesn't matter, I'll say it again. Thank you guys so, so very much for all the love and support in 2018. It's just been overwhelming. We went through over 6,500 followers on Instagram in that, in that year, um, 2,600 or more subscribers here on YouTube. I mean, it's just been fantastic. Cannot thank you enough. 2019 is looking very promising, very exciting. We got stuff coming down the line and obviously uh, more expansion to do, more projects here in the snake room, all kinds of stuff. So stick with us. We're glad you're here. Thank you so much for all the support so far. Real quick video this week. As you guys all know, I run paper in all of my tubs. It's, it's just printless uh, packing paper. I get it at Sam's Club in a big, big like roll or whatever. They're two by two sheets and I just cut them down to, it just so happens the way I cut them, they fit in the 32s, the 15s, the little ones you can't see, and um, the 40s and 41s perfectly. The th three sizes I make fit in all of these, which is nice. But uh, part of the problem we have here in Montana, especially in the wintertime, is humidity is so dry when it gets cold outside. We do have the humidifier here in the room, obviously. Right now, uh, it's 52% in the room, which is good uh, for ambient, but the tubs tend to dry out a little bit uh, because the, you know, the heater's on and everything else. So. Um, I wanted to go back to and try some more uh, coconut husk style beddings. We've used Drepted Chip in the past. We love the product. Um, it's just, as a lot of you are, are well aware, it is kind of pricey at times. Um, the larger the collection gets, obviously, the more expensive it gets. And we don't have a local distributor, so it, it's, it can get kind of pricey when you need a few blocks at a time. Uh, Pro Cocoa is the same way. Cocoa Blocks from Freedom Breeder the same way. Uh, it, it's just different options. So I had heard about and thought I would try because I'm, I'm understood, I've heard from a lot of people that the, the majority of the coconut husk and, and chunk like fiber packets and that, like rep to chip and cocoa blocks and that, are essentially all the same. I don't know this for a fact. I've never tested them side by side. Uh, they do appear to be very similar. They're packed the same, they're the same size, they dissolve the same, but I don't know the process in getting them. But I have heard about this stuff called Grow It. Um, I, I've heard uh, a lot of people use it. You can get it from uh, like uh, grow houses for uh, like plants and stuff, like nurseries and whatnot, a lot of times supply. I got it on Amazon. Um, it's fairly inexpensive on Amazon, actually. It's, uh, it's not too bad. You can probably hear my guinea pig Wilbur there, but um, it's not too, not too expensive, really, and it seems to be pretty similar if not uh, the same so we're gonna break up one of these I'm gonna show you real quick how I do it and then it's cleaning day in here so every tub's gonna get top to bottom cleaned disinfected started over we're gonna get weights on everybody for the records and then we're gonna go back to this and then later in the video I'll cut back it'll be a few days or a week or whatever later and I'll do an update of how the humidity is looking here how the sheds are going we've got a couple of girls that are ready to shed any day now so We'll use that as a, a barometer to see how everything is going. And I'll just give you my opinion on how it worked. So let's do that. Let's get this ready to go. All right, so I apologize if it's a little noisy in here, if there's some background uh, sound in that. I am in my utility room, laundry room, whatever you call it. And the dryer is running at the moment. Shouldn't be too bad, as long as the furnace doesn't kick on. If that kicks on, it's going to get loud. Uh, but we got the block here. And this is just the standard um, size and weight that you get from their 10-pound and this is basically exactly what Raptor Chip and Cocoa Box comes in. Uh, I've got, it's kind of off frame here. I've got a big wash basin. I'll pull you guys in when I do this. Uh, it's just a utility sink, and right now it's full about uh, probably six or so inches, eight inches of lukewarm water, just because it's not cold to the hands. Uh, and then I've got my 72 quart tub, this same tub I use for like, or same size tub that I use for like rat bedding and food and stuff like that. One of these blocks fits perfect in a 72 quart. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna take this, I learned this from Justin Kabilka actually, I'll, I'll link his video up here, uh, up here. 
and uh, it's where I learned it. Basically, we're just going to take the block and we're going to push it, we're going to submerge it under the water for about a minute, minute and a half, flip it over, submerge it again, about a minute or so. You don't want to get to where it completely falls apart because then it's going to be a mess trying to get it out of here. Um, but submerge it until most of the bubbles go away on both sides, then take the block out as best you can and set it in your tub and just leave it. And as it absorbs in, it'll fall apart. Uh, works perfect and then that way you've got just about the right amount of, of water in the block so it's not too wet but doesn't dry out too quick. If you don't have a tub like this, you can actually do that in your container here. You just want to put a little bit of water in it, set the block inside, let it start to absorb it. If it absorbs all the water, flip it over, add a little bit more and the same effect, it'll, it'll work just fine. So come on in here, I'll show you and we'll get this thing submerged and we'll break it up. All right, so basically all we're going to do here, we're just going to cut the plastic out. Try to take this out in one big block if we can help it. Um, it should stay together pretty easily, really. Toss that aside. And then we're just literally going to set this block in as a hole right into the water and submerge it. It's not an exact science on the amount of time. You'll see it, the bubbles and how it all works. So we're just going to go like this and submerge it. It starts to absorb the water and bubble. So that's about good there. We'll go ahead and flip it over. Same thing. You can see how much water it's absorbed already because now it doesn't go, it doesn't submerge all the way. Okay, that's about good. Let it drain. Because you don't want all this water in there. It'll start to get way too wet and, and uh, potentially mold. So you want to let it drain as much as you can. Like so. This block's gonna be real heavy when it's full of water. And just bring it over here and set it. Just set it in the tub and let it do its thing. We'll collect some of the extra pieces here out of the out of the uh, sink so it doesn't go down the drain. Alright, so got it in here. I don't know if you can tell by the scale. I'll show you how much this has expanded in size. There's what we started with in uh, the size of the block and this obviously now is significantly larger so it's going to keep expanding but you can see now how it just falls apart just like that and when you get to the center it should be fairly fairly moist it might not have got all the way to the middle it's not a huge issue again you don't want it too wet because um, you can cause molding in that so we're just going to kind of rattle this around pick it up break it up a little bit so far, compared to the others, the Repti chip that I've used, uh, I'm, like I said, this is the only other one I've used is Repti chip. This uh, this appears to be absorbing and breaking down just as good. Um, I will say, and this is one of the com complaints that I had heard from some people. Uh, I'll see if you can tell here. This has a lot of fiber, a lot of these like strings, as opposed to mostly chip. So you. So some people prefer a lot of the chunks um, and less fiber. This comes from the husk of the coconut, obviously. Um, I, don't, I don't mind either way, really. You can see here it's a little bit drier, but that's not a huge issue. If you do get to this point, you can always uh, add water to it and wet it down. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna break it up like so um, and then mix it all really well in here. And the residual water that's in the rest of this will help uh, soften it up. It's usually just a few inches in the middle. So like this all breaks off really nice and I'm just left with like this little this little patch in the middle that is a little bit drier and in fact so what I'm going to do is since this is a fairly solid piece here is I'm going to go dunk this under the water again for just a few seconds on each side just to break this up a little bit. So I'll be right back. All right. <clears throat> all right so I'm back here got that same block. You can see it definitely looks better now not nearly as dry and it's falling apart. So all it took was like 10 or 20 seconds on each side in that same bin of water because it's so much thinner. It's still not completely uh, wet all the way through, but that's not, again, not a huge issue. We'll just break it up. All right, guys, just wanted to show you how I do this real quick. This is uh, one of the big 41 quart tubs. This one happens to be for my big fire female, Fiona. Probably the first one that's gonna have eggs too, by the way, so stay tuned for that. Uh, it's all cleaned up, ready to go. I've got her water dish here, ready to go. And so I'm just gonna put some of this new bedding that we made in here. And it doesn't have to be crazy thick. Um, you just want 
you know, coverage all the way down. She's gonna move it around where she wants it, depending on how much uh, heat she wants, if she wants to nest for the eggs hopefully we're coming, got coming, but um, just kind of like so, you know, maybe an inch or so thick, but make sure it's definitely covered all the way through. The nice thing about the bedding for sure over paper, the, the feature you don't get in paper is the variable depth. So if I put it in like this, it's good coverage all the way around. We'll make a spot for her water dish. Nice thing about these dishes is they're, they're rimmed so I can like dig them in like so. But the, if you got it like this and she wants a little bit more heat, she just moves the stuff out of the way, gets down to the plastic where the heat tape is. This is why I say 90 degrees on the raw plastic, not you know in the tub. Um, if she wants it built up a little bit more, you know, to have like a barrier, she can do that. So you don't get that with paper, obviously. So we're gonna do that, and we're gonna take her. Like I said, the big fire female Fiona, well over 3,000 grams, pretty confident that she's either full of eggs or very close to it. So we're keeping an eye open for that ovulation. But there you go with that. She looks fantastic in here, and the humidity should obviously be quite a bit better. All right, you guys, it's been about a week and a half, maybe two weeks, something like that, since I put the coconut bedding in all of the tubs here in the snake room. Um, I just kind of wanted to give you my final thoughts and results on all of it. Uh, it is definitely uh, more fibrous, I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, than say Reptichip. Reptichip is the only other brand that I have any experience with and I really enjoyed it. I just wanted to give the paper a try for a while since I do run a room humidifier uh, and that works fine. Obviously every time uh, they use the bathroom on the paper I have to take all the paper out, usually clean the tub and put brand new paper in every time. This you you can pick up the, the poop in one shot and throw it away and put a little handful back in its place. So. Um, so first off, yes, very fibrous. And I don't know that I like that, honestly. I'm not so much worried about impaction because it, it is a soft material. So uh, they should be able to pass it just fine. But I have noticed because the volume is not comprised mostly of the big chips, the humidity and conversely the absorbency seem to dry out much, much faster. Um, obviously here in this tote where I store it, has a tub on it, or a lid on it rather, so you dig in the middle of this and it's still pretty well, pretty well damp, which is nice. Um, if you look at some of this, like this girl here, it's kind of, I don't know if I'll be able to see this as well, um, but you can see this stuff has, this stuff has dried out pretty, pretty quick. It's kind of almost like tinder now. Um, or like a fire starter. So, and I did notice, obviously they get some in their bowls now when they move it around, uh, but it does seem to be, I don't know if it's necessarily dyed, but it does change the water color significantly. Same thing over here in the 32s, and this stuff is basically bone dry now. Uh, so yeah, that I guess is the, the big takeaway, is it's really dry, or dries out really quick, uh, and because of that, obviously, it uh, doesn't hold the moisture, which means it doesn't absorb the moisture uh, as well. Um, but yeah, I probably am not gonna use it again. It is a good value, of course. Yeah, so I think that's, uh, I think that's my final verdict. The Grow It uh, Cocoa Chip, whatever they call it, is not bad, uh, but not what I'm gonna continue to use. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, just my my review and my uh, opinion on the Grow It uh, Cocoa Chip. Uh, I probably am not gonna do one on Rep Chip because everybody else already has and everybody knows what it is. Uh, but I am probably gonna change everybody over to it. So that's uh, that's the end of that. If you guys liked and liked the video, subscribe, share it. Um, comment down below, tell me what you use for your, uh, for your bedding. I'll see you guys next week. Thanks.